South Africans are still traumatized from having to watch a video in which unarmed civilians are being assaulted by the South African police's VIP protection unit and watching an unconscious man being kicked repeatedly. We now speak to Action Society's Ian Cameron, who is fighting for justice for that victim. Welcome, Ian. Thank you, Chris. It's good to join you again. May we please get an update from you? What happened that day? What has the victim told you? So um, he, his name is um, Levogan uh, Fisher, and uh, he has mandated us to try and, and, and get justice uh, to, to support him through this process, both criminally and, and in, in terms of the civil processes. What he's explained to me is very disturbing. You know, it, it actually sounds... It, it confirms that this was a crime. I, I was about to say it sounds like a crime, but it, it was a crime. So he says they were driving back home, um, and uh, it, this was Sunday afternoon. They were, I think they were in the middle or the left-hand lane on the highway, and then this black SUV pulled up next to them and tried to push them to the side. He looked to his right, and he thought, we, we're going to be hijacked because they were pointing at him, and the next moment he accelerated, they pulled up next to him again, and then they pointed a rifle at him. He then sped up again, but then another SUV pulled up in front of him. So now he's been boxed in. And then they kind of, you know, pushed them to the side of the road. Uh, when they'd reached the side of the road, uh, the cops got out. Uh, at that stage, still thought they were hijackers. Um, they didn't have uniform on. He says there were no blue lights, no siren at, when the whole thing happened. He says, and then they, they used the, the butt of one of the assault rifles. He says it was an R5. We can see in the video one of the mm. cops that have an R5 with him. And they were hitting the, the driver's window, and they didn't manage to break. They then went to the back right passenger window. They smashed that window, broke it out. That's how they gained access to the vehicle. They managed to get hold of um, Levogan. They then hit him with a rifle over the head. Um, and uh, and beat him, and in this beating, he lost consciousness. So from where everything you see in the video, he's unconscious. So by the time he woke up, he still thought they had been hijacked. Um, they then beat him, dragged him to the side, and uh, you saw you saw everything else that happened on the video. He must be incredibly traumatized. Yeah, he's um look, he, uh, you know, he's he's razzled. And I, when I spoke to him earlier today, I said to him, "You must be so hurtful." Uh, sick mm. of this whole story and he said to me you are <laughs> he, he let his words were you're telling me um so so he's just I, I think he just actually wants to move on um you know the the I think the thing with this is that he wasn't conscious the whole time so it, it's almost like he kind of he kind of realized he, he realizes how bad it could have maybe even got you know how much worse it could have been um, I think the, 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 the worrying part for us, uh, and when, we, when I chatted to him, is that people seem to think, uh, you know, that a lot of people only think about the physical injuries, but the, the trauma for something like this is, is severe. And remember that all of us need to carry on living, we need to drive, we need to go to work, etc. So it's not a question of if it's going to happen to you, it's when it's going to happen to you. And it's becoming so regular. Um, and again, the state has virtually done nothing to sort this out. How are you going to take this fur further? How are you going to try and get justice for him? So we've launched several steps. Um, I think, look, I'm very worried about the fact that I think the SNDF might try to, to silence him. Um, and the reason is that this afternoon uh, they gave an instruction that he is not allowed to speak, even in his private capacity, without any reference to the SNDF. Uh, if there is not a general present uh, with the with an uh, an interview, um, that to me is 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 wrong. Uh, I think it's a massive contravention of of freedom of speech, and and we can debate that all day. What we are going to do, and what we will continue doing over the next uh, few, probably the few next few weeks, is that we will uh, continue with a petition that we've launched. We've launched a petition that's already been signed by thousands of people. Uh, demanding that the blue light mafia, as we've called them, be disbanded. 
we actually want them to be banned. We said if we need some kind of a VIP protection unit, it should be rebuilt from the bottom up. Uh, it needs to be with impeccable integrity, with the relevant training, etc. Um, but with the current one, you can't, you know, you can't win the Durban July with a donkey. We've spoken about that before with regard to SAPs. And this is kind of the same thing. You know, these guys are donkeys. In this case, they're criminals. And uh, and we can't we can't win uh, with with criminals. So the petition will carry on. The idea behind the petition is not necessarily that it's a magic wand, but uh, rather that we can use it either to go to parliament, go to the minister of police, go to the president, but that we can exhaust all the different remedies with as much um, as much uh, human or citizen support behind us as possible. So that's that side. Then. Uh, in terms of IPIT, the um, uh, Independent Police Investigative Directorate, we have uh, submitted our own complaint demanding that the charges not only be assault. Uh, we then heard after we submitted the complaint that the only charge that they have opened officially that the police can see on their side is a charge of assault with the intent to commit grievous bodily harm, so assault GBH. We said to IPIT, we need to make sure that it uh, includes attempted murder. It must include uh, the uh, pointing of a firearm. It must also include intimidation. We can also even add a case of malicious damage to property in terms of the car that was so badly damaged mm. from this whole ordeal. Um, apart from that, uh, Chris, we will obviously be uh, going through different civil uh, remedies that we might be able to assist with. So we've, we've completed most of the writing in, in terms of that, and we'll probably meet with the rest of the legal team again tomorrow. And, uh, and then we'll take it from there. So there's quite a lot to be done. I think the crucial part for us at the moment is to remain vocal, that it doesn't become quiet. That's absolutely crucial. So we want as many people as possible to, to speak about this, to share their stories, share the ordeals that they've experienced with these blue light thugs, and, uh, and tell the world, about the the reality that all of us face you know uh, i think we're at a point in south africa where it's so incredibly unjust when it comes to being a law-abiding citizen but when you are politically connected you get favors all over Chris. has the victim been contacted by um, deputy president paul Mashatili, who's vip protection officers um assaulted him no, there's been no contact by, by any senior person from any government authority. The only people that have contacted him, obviously he's spoken with the SNDF uh, on their instruction and uh, and he's been contacted by IPIT. But um, very little real support, nothing in terms of trauma support um, and SAPs just pull up their shoulders and say IPIT needs to investigate. Now, I say arrest them, I say sack them. I want to see which union in this country as the guts to come forward and say that those guys need to stay in service of the South African police service uh, uh, after what they did. It would be, it would be union suicide. So I say, just do the necessary and get rid of them. I think it's an atrocity that they are being allowed to stay in service. So now what the national commission has said today is that they have been withdrawn from official duty on the outside but now they've been put in administrative duty. So they are still working. They haven't been officially suspended. All of the eight police officers that were there that day have been served with letters of suspension. But that letter simply says they've got seven days to say why um, they shouldn't be suspended, which is just not good enough. I mean, if you and I pointed a gun at someone, then kicked them, beat them until they're unconscious, carried on beating them after they had lost conscious, then we'd be behind bars. You and I would be begging for bail. But if you're a cop in South Africa that wears a suit and reports to the deputy president, you can beat anyone and get away with it. May we speak about the budget for VIP protection officers for the next financial year? I believe it's 3.4 billion. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's disgusting. Um, it, it shows, yeah, it, yeah, and it's more than what the Hawks are getting. Um, it's it's more than several other very important portfolios in the police, and it actually confirms the disregard that the state has for the people in the country. You know, um, what we did today, just for the fun of it, we uh, we made wanted posters of, of these cops to distribute. 
And the reason we did that is that's what they would have done to us. That's what they would have done to ordinary South Africans. So let's start pushing back to them. Um, and we started distributing these. And, and, you know, I've come to a point where I actually want to say that if they should appear before court and uh, the state is unsure, we should actually pay for their bail and, uh, and let them come out to communities because communities are so tired of having to face the same criminality from the state over and over again. And there's just nothing to be done. So in terms of the budget, the budget is a, is, is, is a way of them condoning criminal police. Yeah, because essentially now the protection of politicians uh, gets more funding than than the investigation of serious crimes. Exactly. No, exactly. It it it, it it's 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 and not ridiculous. just a, a little bit more. I think we're talking about uh, almost a, a more than a billion. Yes. Yes. Um, exactly. Maths. I don't. I'm not great at maths, but I hope that's correct. Um, no, exactly. It's absolutely ridiculous. Ian, will you share those wanted posters with us? Um, of course. Yeah, I'll share them shortly. I'll send them to you. Um, and uh, yeah, we can, we can, we, we want them to be shared far and, far and wide. Well, hopefully we can speak to the victims soon, even if in the presence of a general. Thank you, Absolutely. Ian. Thank you very much for that update. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.